sharing with you about some of the colonies that the English started and the people who started them. I graduated from College of the Ozarks and I have a postdoctorate in archaeology. The 15th through the 17th centuries is called the Age of Exploration. During this time, the English attempted to set up settlements in the New World and King James I dreamed of setting up a colony in the New World. It was believed that competition would help greater success in establishing a colony. So King James set up the Virginia Company. It had two sections. One was called the Plymouth Company and the other the London Company. The King wanted the Plymouth Company to find gold, to find a route to the Orient, and to make a profit. They came over on the Susan Constant, the Godspeed, and the Discovery in May of 1607 with 104 men and boys aboard. Now the London Company, they were to study the 34th to the 41st degree latitude, and the Plymouth was to study the 38th to the 45th degree latitude line. The Plymouth Company also landed in May of 1607 in Maine. After a year and a single month, the colony failed and the surveyors returned to England. My name is Abram Fisher and today I will be discussing about the Charter of 1606. My education was College of the Ozarks and, and I am currently teaching there as well. I am an adjunct professor. My degree is History, Doctor of philosophy and I also learned with a fellow friend of uh, with a friend of mine Seth he was a good friend now he is an archaeologist but I also studied archaeology at one point in time and that is how I met him now let me get on with the fun stuff Plymouth Colony in the London Colony played a big role in creating the National Charter of the United States it began with the Charter of 1606 which gave the colonies a legal right to exist. Its main purpose was to spread the Christian religion. When they first landed in Virginia Beach, they planted a wooden cross in the sand. Then Pastor Robert Hunt, who was the chaplain of the Jamestown colony, knelt at the cross and offered a prayer of dedication. United States of America was established in the shadow of the cross of Christ's kingdom and has became the most evangelistic nation in the world. There was one big difference in these colonies from other European settlements. Most of the other settlements were under the monarchies of France. Spain and Portugal authority was totally invested in the crown of the king. The colonists from England brought with them self-government. Sir Edwin Sandys was one of the founders of the Virginian Company and was also a member of the Parliament. He was the one who implemented the seeds of Christian common law into the Charter. It stated that the authority of these colonies were under the providence of the Almighty God. 
Therefore, their rights were inalienable and could not be taken away. He helped Wright stated that God-given rights of individuals would go with them to the new world. It said their rights came from God and not King James. King James must not have read this charter, however, as he believed that he was the law. Sir Edwin Sandys, however, believed that the king was under the same law as everyone else. The charter was the Civil Birth Certificate of America. I have a doctorate degree in historical art. I have a postdoctorate in Jamestown history directly in the historical papers. Recently, I have started work teaching in museums. And today I'm going to share about Sandy Purpose in the Charter of 1606. In the charter, there was five main things. Greater tolerance for religious freedoms, abolishment of the old feudism system, establishment of freedom of trade to overthrow monopolies, and an invitation to the king's power, particularly the king's prerogative, which means his assembly, and to bring forth more fruit of the common law by setting up the first legislative assembly. Which means, of course, the first one makes sense. Greater religious tolerance means more religious freedoms, choose your religion, abolishment of the old feudalism system, at that time meaning that they did not have to do a certain job to be protected by the government. There was also the establishment of free trade to overthrow monopolies. This meant you could trade with who you saw fit within reason, of course, because you wouldn't want to be unfair to someone just according to gender or what color their skin was. Next, there was limiting the king's power, particularly the king's prerogative. So this meant to limit the government, which at that time was a king, and his all of his party, like the people that would enforce what he had to say. There was also bringing forth more fruit of common law by setting up the first legislative assembly. This meant that we would have laws that benefited the people and we would not let anybody be above the law because the king believed he was above the law, but Sandy did not. Then on July 30th of 1619, the first legislative assembly met in the new world. This was establishing the right for our God-given, our God-given right. And that was 200 years later for what the Declaration of Independence was based on. In this assembly, there was, it consisted of a governor, six counselors, and 20 representatives. It met to establish equal government over all Virginia, which would provide just laws made by the people for the people, putting no one man or woman above the law, but holding them all to the same standards. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Aaliyah Minx. I go to Stone Corner University and I am an author for a lot of historical books. Let me share some of my most recent piece with you. Chapter one, Jamestown. So Jamestown was with the people who came. They were made up of artisans, farmers, and laborers with little experience surviving in the wilderness. They were not used to doing so much manual labor. The area they settled in was a swamp covered in mosquitoes. The water was not a good clean source, and there was little church to be found, but death was always near. Living in the same area were 14,000 Algonquian-speaking Indians. Their chief was named Powhatan. He and his men would often attack the colonists. A lot of them died of lack of food. Only 40 of the original 104 colonists still remained with the next shipload of settlers and provisions arrived. Most of them had died of disease, famine, or taxed by the Algonquians. During this time, Chief Powhatan's daughter, Pocahontas, became a friend to the colonists and tried to help them. By June 15th, the colonists were able to build a three-sided fort that went around the storehouse, the church, and their homes. I'm afraid that's all I've written for now, folks. If you want to check out the rest of this, go to www.sassyhistorical.com. Hi, I'm Sarah.
Sydney Turner. I have a PhD in education and I graduated from the University of Missouri and I have been working at the University of Missouri for 10 years in college grade level. Um, today we'll be talking about time dates and tobacco shipments from Jamestown. In 1608, a fire destroyed the fort, leaving colonists without food or water. Pocahontas brought food and supplies to the starving colonists. The captain of the colonies, John Smith, even recalled the time that he had been captured by Chief Cohatton and was going to be sentenced to death. Pocahontas threw herself across his body just as he was to be killed and saved his life. Then she pleaded with her father to have him return to Jamestown. Unfortunately for John Smith, after his return, he was burned by a gunpowder explosion and had to return to England. After his departure that winter, it became known as the Starving Time for the colonists. Another 400 colonists arrived and were met with starvation and disease. Nearly 80% of the people died. These who did survive were so sick, they began to wander off and ultimately leave the fort. It wasn't until June of 1610 that a new governor arrived. His name was Thomas Gates III, known today as Lord Delaware. He brought with him three supply ships and 150 people. In a short time, the colonies were back on its feet. The first two English women arrived at Jamestown in 1608. Soon more women came. Most of them were widows. In order for the Virginia Company settlers to put in profit, they needed some small Job. These included glass making, wood polishing, and none of these proved to be profitable. Then came the introduction of tobacco as a cash crop in 1613. A man named John Rolfe started the industry. Tobacco was grown and shipped to England. The first shipments were in 1614. They turned out to be a gold mine for the colony. Um, 10 tons of tobacco was shipped to England in 1619. Uh, in 1639, 750 tons of tobacco had been shipped to England. This caused a great interest to other people and colonists began coming to America by the thousands. <laughs> I'm Rebecca, or you might know me better as Pocahontas, and today I'm going to be covering over, well, my life and what happened to me. 2 Corinthians 6.14 says, Do not be yoked together with unbelievers, for what do righteous and wickedness have in common, or what fellowship can light have with darkness? That's just something that I wanted to say at first, because it had a very big impact on my life. During the month of March 1613, I and my husband, Kokulam, which is him right here, were living in the Pohontan village. I was kidnapped and taken to an English village on the James River. There, I was held for ransom. According to the Pohontan's customs, if a woman was captured by another tribe or group, she was no longer married. So that's what I had to think over while I was being held ransom. While I was being held ransom, I became a Christian. It was the biggest impact on my life that has had ever happened. I also changed my name to Rebecca. Then I married John Rolfe, which is him right there. John had lost his wife and children during the trip to England. In 1616, John and I made a trip to the Virginian Company. The marriage of John and I brought up many questions about should English and Indians be married. John tried to bring up references from the Bible to say that I am a believer now and that it's as I said before, 2 Corinthians 6.14, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. All, all of my life came back to 2 Corinthians 6.14. Uh, my name is Veronica McCray and I'm a scholar at College of the Ozarks and I have a degree in History and the Master of Arts. I've taught there for five years. I'm going to talk about John Smith and his company. In 1607, John Smith and his company arrived in Jamestown. It is believed that the Geneva Bible was probably brought to Jamestown with them. And the colonists had come to America to plant seeds of God-given rights. 
self-government and to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to all the world. The Geneva Bible was one item in seeing all that happened. In 1611, the Rev Reverend Alexander Whitaker arrived in the colony and he used the Geneva Bible for his sermons. The Geneva Bible included commentary of the reformers in Europe who had questioned the role of the king establishment of the church. The information along with the scripture, the Geneva Bible became the foundation upon which our great nation was founded. It led us far from the king and his control and eventually into one nation under God with liberty and justice for all. The king wanted the The king wanted the Plymouth Company to find gold. <laughs> Joey cut. I got my pen stuck in the book. Oops! I'm Veronica McCray and I'm a scholar at the col the College of the Ozarks. Hi. <laughs> I'm current Okay. The old feudalism system means they got rid of working. <laughs> pitch and tar. And As they were preparing to return home, I died. Which now that I'm creating the charter. <laughs> Did you stop it? No, oh, okay. <laughs> Darn it. I have a degree in history and the Master of Arts. I've 